Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Jenny LeClue, where our old buddy Arthur has really gotten himself into a jam. Get it, because he was... Uh, okay. <clears throat> Look, I see on this post-it note, uh, jam jars and also brandy. I think we can all be thankful that in his moments of stress he goes to the one and not the other. Although I guess there's kind of a lot of sugar in jam, so it's probably not like... It's not great for you. Uh, anyway, very important we don't forget this. Or, or never mind. Maybe we will just throw it away immediately. Is that what he does with all the post-its when I interact with him? Jenny's dead, but no, she's not. Oh, the glasses were on her head. It's genius. It's the most brilliant thing Arthur's ever written. Uh, <laughs> was this too dark? I don't know. Maybe. There was a lot of detail on that body. It was, it was actually very grim. What is underneath this? Ring equals important. It is kind of interesting to be, like, in the space solving the mystery as Jenny, you know, presumably without foreknowledge, but then also to sort of be an agent of Arthur's will, and obviously Arthur does know what has happened. Or, you know what? I guess I'm making an assumption there. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's, like, um, maybe this is, like, a burned teddy bear in the pool kind of situation, and he just... Let's just start with the thing, and I'll figure it out later. You know, it worked for Breaking Bad and Battlestar Galactica. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe that's not entirely fair to say. Poor Dean Strawsberry. Uh, can't play with my pens. You know what? We're about to go out for a w to, to walk the dog. We should turn off the light. Conserve electricity. So this is the text that we saw at the end of yesterday? Yes, okay, it is. Under many circumstances, my memory would be bad enough that I would not uh, would not be certain of that. But I do remember what happened at the end of yesterday's episode. Is this a new letter? Uh, no, you have both been incredibly supportive. Yeah, this is all the same. So. Yep, this is just the text we are already familiar with. Well then, did I miss something? What am I supposed to be doing here? Because I do not, the exit button is not exiting us. Um, is it this? It is this. Oh! Well... Okay, that got a little bit more dramatic than I was expecting. <laughs> Jenny immediately looks right at me like, uh, are you sure what's going on here? This is weird. Are we, like, in a dream? Oh, that's very clever. Huh. So, like, the text on the page is sort of, like, it looks like it's sort of flickering. Not flickering, but it's sort of bleeding between multiple different headlines. Or subtitles, rather. Subheads, maybe, is what those are called? Dean Strasbury found dead. Prime suspect Julie LeClue arrested. I wonder if that... Still would have happened if we'd taken her ID. Like, I, I wonder if there's actually a branch there. Why were you there? Uh, I think our, our plan here is to behave in as obviously truthful a way as possible. I was looking for Mom. Why? We were going to grade papers. When do I get to see her? Did you disturb the crime scene? Okay, yeah, bite the bullet and stick to the strategy. I really do like the time pressure on these, though. I think it adds a lot. He could have been injured. I was just trying to help. I want to speak to my mom. Oh, wow. This is so cool as, like, a literalization of the way it feels to be interrogated by the police. This is really neat. Am I pl uh, Okay, I am playing now. Yep, there we go. That'll, <laughs> that'll save you. Can I crawl fast? I cannot crawl fast. Okay, just, just squeeze out of there and then sprinting, right? Lots of sprinting? Yep, here we go. I'm assuming that we're in a nightmare right now and that... Oh... And that this isn't a thing where, like, the damage to Arthur's psyche from having killed the Dean has not caused him to adopt a new experimental form of storytelling. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, 
Or I guess, honestly, we could be in Arthur's nightmare. It could be Arthur is having a bad dream because of the psyche and also the huge amount of jam that he ate in the middle of the night. Which can't be, like, good for you. Okay, well, I guess continue to escape from the police station. Oh. Please, look at me. Keith, wait! Wow, this is such a cool way to visualize, like, the gossip and the... Man. What an extremely cool sequence. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> Alright, well, we're gonna have to touch one of them. Let's touch the one that has my mom's face. That's me. You know, whenever I have this nightmare, I always go to the one that has my mom's face, and that usually... Are we cool? Oh, I can hug you? No, I just hold your hand. See? Okay, everything's fine. You stop shaking. Oh, alright. Well, hold on. Can I can I go past you? Not really. <laughs> can I pull you away from the other scary thought? Okay, no. We have a hard wall here. Well, this doesn't really leave us with a lot of options. I mean, this is properly very unsettling, though. How are these gonna... Oh. Okay, that makes sense. And then I push them together. Oh, no, okay. So, I don't exactly know what we're do. Okay. I was about to say, I don't exactly know what we're doing here. Like, what is this photograph? But, yeah... Pieces of it are starting to come together, huh? Hmm. Was Dad supposed to have been like a doctor or. Yeah, running. Okay, good. I remember running. <laughs> wow, that. That is really something. <gasps> what a horrible nightmare! Dean Strausbury was dead! My mom was in jail? Keith told me he never wanted to see me again. And worst of all, I was surrounded by an evil army of giant teddy bears! Unfortunately, it was all true, including the teddy bears. My eyes! There's something wrong with them! Everything's pink! But her eyes were fine. It was the room that was pink. Pink cuddly toys. Pink furniture. Pink clothes. And a hand-drawn homage to teenage heartthrob Pelvis Cressley. <laughs> right, it's a little, pink little bit on the nose. Everything a teenage girl could dream of. You know, pelvis. It was at this point Jenny remembered where she was. I shouldn't be here. What happened? And what is that terrible music? I can't think straight with that racket playing. Yeah, yes, it's very distracting. These aren't my clothes. And where's my journal? That wasn't the only thing missing. Oh no, my tiny, tiny shoes! It was in my pocket. Seriously though, if you if shoes that size get taken off of you and you don't know where they are, how are you ever going to find them? Okay, well. 
Stop terrible music. It's a little judgmental. But you know, I guess that's her. She's a little judgmental. <laughs> Pelvis Cressley and the Hip Thrusters with their hit signal, You're the fan that I love. You're the fan that I love. Ah yes, the eagerly awaited follow-up to the smash hit. Even though I'm a big star and you're just a fan, perhaps someday we could be together. <laughs> Ugh, who buys this crap? I wonder if there would be a market for a boy band that just like completely removed this, like just made the subtext text, took off that whole fake top layer. Honestly, it might work. Oh. Hushed whispers in the hallway. I should investigate. This is Jenny's favorite thing, knowing stuff that she's not supposed to know. This is a hell of a bed. I'm still not 100% clear on how old Jenny's supposed to be, but this bed is like almost her height. It goes up to her eye line. I cannot sprint, by the way, in case you're wondering why I'm not. I do not like the big pig. I am thumbs down on that pig. Locked oh. from the outside. Who would trap a child in this nightmarish hellscape? She said that like it's a joke, but actually it is kind of like very screwed up. Jenny Why am I? The tiny keyhole. As her eyes adjusted to the light, she recognized the substantial frame of Winston the Clue, Arthurton's hmm. long-standing sheriff, and Jenny's granddad. I wonder if this is Julie's mom or, or Julie's Jenny's dad. Or... relationship with her grandfather was contentious, to say the least. He was a stern and humorless man who placed honor, tradition, and the law above all else. Sometimes even family. But what was he doing here? And who is he talking to? And clearly, he and Jenny have a complicated relationship, based on Franz that nightmare. And Richard Glatz were the wealthiest couple in town and hugely influential. Their company, Glatz Mining and Supply Corps, was the oldest in Arthurton. While Richard may have been the head of the business, everyone knew that Florence wore the pants. Exceptionally charming and generous, she always had a smile on her face. Which is mm. why I don't trust her one bit. Yeah, same. Big same. Being careful not to make a sound, Jenny leaned in and listened. With everything going on, I don't have time to watch her. It's no trouble at all, really, Winston. She can stay for as long as she likes. The girls are great friends. I only hope she feels better soon. That was quite the scene she made at the funeral. She should have left the boy alone. Really, oh. Winston? This whole situation must be unbearably traumatic for the poor girl. Her mother in jail, and what she saw in the library. One shudders at the thought. And all this barely a year after what happened to Henry. She'll be fine. Just keep an eye on her. She can be a real handful. Oh, don't worry. I've planned everything. Pony rides, afternoon tea, and tomorrow we're going dress shopping. Oh, that reminds me. I have something for you. Why, this sounds like the nicest hey, child prison I can imagine me? being in. I need to get out of here. Fast. But her curiosity was piqued. She had to know what Mrs. Glatz had gone to fetch. And so she waited. Yeah, probably a good idea. Okay, we're just gonna wait for his. Okay, he de he definitely knows we're looking at him. Nathaniel Glatz stared disapprovingly back at Jenny. Mm. Creepy old man. Actually, this was the man who saved Arthurton. When the quartz mines began to run dry, it was his research into the unique properties of the crystals that secured the future prosperity of the town and the company. You can't fool me. I know a strawberry head when I see one. Oh, oh god, this game has made me into a phrenologist. What is going on? Okay, I can't investigate the shards of whatever on the floor. I mean, I'm sure it's just the quartz. When Weird, the though. T. Pumberbitten discovered the first quartz seam lining the oh. Great Mountains, little did he know the impact it would have on the future of the town. Little did he know the Glatz family would muscle in and take over the whole operation. Nowadays, it was hard to go anywhere in town without seeing something made from it. He's saying, huh? oh. Where did he go? Winston, what are you doing down there? Hmm, thought I heard something. 
That was pretty clever. A man of your age spying on teenage girls. I've told you already, she won't be going anywhere. Mm. It was probably just Jenny's imagination, but those words felt oddly sinister. No, that's not your imagination. Here. Satisfied. How is Julie? She's in the safest place, behind bars. Surely they don't believe she's guilty. I don't envy you, Winston. It must be hard to stay impartial. Hmm. If the poor okay. dear would just confess, it would make things much easier. I have everything under control. Of course you do, dear. No one doubts your loyalty to Arthurton. We must continue to look out for each other, now more than ever. Sheriff, are you receiving? Go ahead. It's the LeClue house, sir. We found something. I'll be right there. Over. It sounds like you've got important things to take care of. Yes. Well, good night, Florence. Good night, Winston. Don't let her out of your sight. She is a LeClue, after all. I'm sure we'll manage. Aha, and your overconfidence will be your downfall. Jenny couldn't believe what she'd just heard. Everyone thinks my mom's a murderer. Thankfully, her mother's fate was in safe hands. The fine people of the Arthurton Police Department. Oh, God. She's gonna rot in jail. Jenny could leave the case to them and enjoy a fun week of pony rides and shopping sprees. And imprisonment. No. no. Mom always says a great detective leaves nothing to chance. I have to do something. But she was just a kid. What could she possibly do? This is my chance. The case of a lifetime. My mom needs me, and I won't let her down. I'm gonna find my stuff and get out of here. And just like that, a great adventure began. I really like this sort of like Jenny as a representation of this spark of ambition within Arthur against his fear that if he steps outside of like his normal milieu, he maybe will not produce a thing that is good or a thing that people like. It's a really interesting way of framing this writer struggling with himself over these notes. Um, also, I'm thinking from the way she said remain impartial that maybe this is our maternal grandfather and Julie just didn't change her name when she got married. Uh, which is probably good news for mom, right? I don't have my detective gear to pick the lock. Besides, I can't just walk out in front of Mrs. Glatz. Yeah, they did take away my hairpin, didn't they? Or hair clip. Oh no. <laughs> no, I hate it. I love you. I love you. It is not mutual. Okay, I am extra thumbs down on pig. The sun was setting behind the great mountains of Arthurton, cradling the town in a warm red embrace. I slept the whole day away? I have to get out of here and make up for lost time. Still not allowed to sprint. Oh, hold on a second. Did I get... Where'd that ping come from? Ah. All the dangly bits are swaying. Mm. Strange. It's not windy in here. Oh. Okay. All right, this is... <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by phrasing. We're still doing phrasing, right? Uh, this is a, a video game classic. There's a breeze, so there's some kind of secret exit. Best uh, in show, first, let's look at these. Ballet. First prize, advanced table etiquette. There's one here for best smile. Seriously? I get Jenny being sort of, like, reactionarily against this, like, foo-foo rich girl stuff, but, like, horse ballet sounds legitimately very difficult. There's a track in the ceiling panel around the chandelier. It looks like it can move. A heart-shaped mirror for the lady who loves herself. 
I'm kind of curious what tack the game is actually going to take with Jenny being judgmental about traditionally girly things. So, wait, what am I supposed to be doing here? Ouch! That's hot! <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough, that's my bad. So, then this is the controller for the, the secret exit, right? Like, why else would they let us interact with this? Just turn all the lights on? Okay, I was gonna say, if that doesn't do it, then we probably have to, like, find a, uh, a, a map of what to do somewhere in this room. Hmm, there's something strange about this mirror. This requires further investigation. Okay, yeah, there's, like, bookshelves and stuff over to the left. I'm sure we'll find it. Seriously, who has windows this big? Below, Lake Nowhere stretched out as far as the eye could see. In the distance, Jenny could just make out the great lighthouse on Skull Island. It's fun. Oh, they just call it Skull Island. That kind of rules. <laughs> I'm into that. Also, the answer to who has windows this big is rich people, Jenny. We have found ourselves in the clutches of cops and rich people. It's not, uh, it's not a great sign. Havoc at Heroes Memorial. What should have been a touching farewell to a beloved member of the community was tarnished by a poorly timed act of protest yesterday at Mother of Mercy Church. An emotionally unstable child, hey, judgmental, was witnessed shouting at members of the congregation, causing damage to property and even desecrating the corpse. Oh, God. After a long chase, the girl collapsed and was carried from the premises. So the funeral already happened. This is the morning edition from Monday. So this could be the Monday after, what, it was Thursday last episode, right? So maybe we've only missed a couple of days, or it could it could well be that there was like a whole week in there. Um, but it seems like the part that we missed was pretty bad. Uh, hundreds gathered to pay their respects to the late Leslie Strawsberry, the long-standing and beloved dean of Gumboldt University who was murdered in cold blood by a member of his own faculty. It does not even say allegedly. The community was devastated last Thursday when Mr. Strawsbury was found dead in the school library after apparently being pushed from a third-story balcony. The murder was the first the town had seen in decades. Dean Strawsbury is survived by his son, Keith Strawsbury. A at least there wasn't apparently in that paragraph. After an anonymous tip, Sheriff Winston LeClue arrived first on the scene and found a woman covered in the Dean's blood. Evidence has linked her to the murder. Although a motive for the killing has not been established, the woman has been identified as Julie LeClue, professor of criminology, daughter-in-law... Okay, daughter-in-law to Sheriff Winston. She remains in, cust in custody at this time while police continue their investigation. She wasn't covered in blood, right? We saw her. But I guess maybe we didn't. Maybe that was, like, just a thing that Jenny imagined while she was in the process of passing out from the fall or something. Now I'm unsure of myself. She wasn't covered in blood, right? My memory is very bad, but I'm pretty sure I would have remembered that. Oh, I'm supposed to be... Sorry, I'm supposed to be looking for clues. Uh, is the headline a clue? I don't remember any of this. I bet that kid's in a lot of trouble. Uh, yes, I bet she is. Pushed from the balcony? That's not what happened. And no mention of electrocution. Okay, interesting. I kind of thought that um, this was just a kind of a crummy description of that weird scaffolding ladder thing that they had going on. But if Jenny's taken aback by this, then probably the narrative wants us to just view this as a, a lie, right? Mom wasn't covered in blood. That's a lie. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Listen, it is somewhat terrifying to live in a state of like almost constant epistemic collapse. It's really nice when when my memories are validated. Jenny thought of her poor mother locked away in a jail cell for a crime she didn't commit. Don't worry, Mom. I'll prove you didn't do it as soon as I get out of here. Either this uh, her is being... reporting, or someone is trying to cover up what really happened. My mom's still in jail, so the police must not think this was an accident. And if it wasn't an accident, then... The real killer is still out there! 
I mean, there was definitely some kind of foul play because somebody called in the thing right away, right? Like somebody wanted the police to get there and and make this conclusion. So definitely something happened. The question I have now is like, is this reporter just very irresponsible or are they potentially a suspect or at least part of the deal, right? Because this is, um, this is, this is a lot of lies. Let's hope that that uh, paragraph about the desecration also because, gosh, that would be not good if it were real. On the other side of the lake, beyond the forgotten forest, sat a more modest house. No fancy windows or crystal chandeliers, just a small wooden frame in need of painting. Home. I've never seen so many clothes. Maybe mine are Jenny, in here somewhere. That's nine hangers. Well, my clothes definitely aren't here. It'd be easy to spot amongst all the sequins and ribbons. I mean, maybe not. Maybe maybe the wardrobe just like razzle dazzled you. Already looked at the record. Okay. Uh, well, it usually doesn't let us investigate things twice. Oh, okay. This is the sh this is the shape of the mirror. So there's five lights between. Okay. All right. I think I can reproduce that. I kind of dig the weird abstract paintings on the wall, the ones that are just like squares and rectangles. Although I guess those aren't really. Those are like R Rocco's Modern Life squares. <laughs> you know, it's not not quite a rectangle. Okay, so turn off the light, and actually I have to turn off almost everything, right? So there were five lights off in the bottom of the shape, and then five lights off in the top of the shape. Okay, I th think this is, uh, this is not symmetrical. Actually, it's the mirror that's not symmetrical. Yeah, this is... Fine. I'm already doubting myself. Well, whatever. If it's wrong, we'll just fix it. Okay. That's pretty intense. This family's disposable income is outrageous. I always knew they were hiding something. I bet there are all kinds of horrific secrets lurking up there. So, okay, are we in the daughter's room or are we in like a guest bedroom? Because if we're in the daughter's room, then this is the daughter's doing, right? Somehow. If you were, if you were, you know, the family as a whole, the parents or whatever, putting a secret exit or a secret room somewhere in the house, you wouldn't want to do it here in your child's bedroom, because they're definitely going to find it eventually. Oh, it's just a dusty old attic. Okay. Oh, hello, spooky bear. It is a little Feels spooky. Like watching me. This is my magnifying glass thing. The camera in his eye? It is. Oh my god. Everything in here is covered in dust. Except this bear. And there's light coming from behind him. What are you hiding, spooky bear? Yeah, there's the okay. The light coming from behind and thing is is good work, Jenny. Okay, so that's gonna be our exit probably. Let's just look around first to make sure we're not missing stuff. Dozens of old boxes covered in dust and cobwebs, filled with toys, school projects, and old trophies. Attics where dreams go to die. What's this? Way out of here. Locked. 
but where is the lock? Okay, I was kind of thinking, okay, if we can open the window, we'll do that, and then we'll just go back to the to the bear and see what's what. To me... Yep, okay. Careful, Jenny. Yeah, that's kind of what I was. Smothered by a giant teddy bear. What an end that would have been. Just as I suspected, a hidden staircase. Oh. <laughs> you don't say. Jenny was no stranger to the labs at Gumbold, but she'd never seen anything quite like this. Yeah, it's a whole Dexter's Certainly Lab situation. Inside someone's house. Okay. Hey, well, what are you doing up here? What kind of security system is this? Susie? <laughs> Loved by all, kind to a fault, Jenny's cousin was also the most popular girl in town. Oh, uh, hi, Jenny. Er, uh, um, you... You should be in bed resting. What are you doing up here? I should ask you the same question. And so I will. <laughs> I mean, the mysterious figure is not really that mysterious. I think let's go this way. What is all this equipment? Why is there a secret elevator running from your room to the attic? Oh, you must need my collection of teddy bears. Ah, okay. I mean... I don't think Jenny LeClue is a very diplomatic person, frankly. Don't play dumb with me, Susan Glass. These bears are hiding nothing. And that one's wearing a welding helmet. Well, um, there's a simple explanation for that. There are just too many to fit in my bedroom. I am sort of rethinking that, though. Like, you know, our mom did give us that advice about establishing a rapport. Alright, I'm changing tax here. Surely something's weighing heavily on your mind. Take a deep breath and answer the question honestly. I promise you'll feel better. It's not what you think. This is where I, um, er... Teddy bears. I have vintage bears, new bears, rare collectible bears. Enough. Stop avoiding the question. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try taking this tag. I'm a little torn on how I want to play Jenny, but... Let's stick with this for now. You don't need to hide anything. You can be honest with me. I can't. You wouldn't understand. Try me. Susie's secret was the kind you took to the grave. A shameful, dark secret. A secret so shocking she feared she would lose everything. Her friends would abandon her. Her family would disown her. She'd never find true love. Oh, God! I'm going to die alone. These are some serious insecurities. You can't tell anyone. You have to promise me. Yeah, okay. Continue establishing rapport. Fine, just stop whimpering like a lost puppy. You're embarrassing Jenny. yourself. Jenny, rapport. Uh, here goes nothing. I'm Batman. This is my secret laboratory. Where I design and test my inventions. <laughs> what do you mean, don't buy it? We're surrounded by evidence. Your laboratory, where you invent things. Yes. You, a cheerleading, horse-riding, dress-wearing debutante. Yes. 
I want to believe you, Susie, but you know how crazy that sounds. That's why you can't tell anyone. If people found out, I'd lose everything. Could it be true? Susie Glatt's, in fact, a secret nerd genius. Was she really leading a double life? There's only one way to find out. Susan Quincy Glatz, I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions. Again, I feel like it's already very proven. So, for the moment, I have kind of complicated feelings about what's going on here, because, like, in one sense, I feel like... I feel like Jenny LeClue is being set up to sort of represent, like, a straw man version of a weird argument. Like, you know, Jenny LeClue is being set up to be, like, a cartoon bad guy in, like, a Legally Blonde-style story, which I think is strange. I guess, given that these books are written for younger readers, there's some value in, like, making the conflicts kind of simple. Um... And I do think that, given the way Jenny is with people, Susie, as someone who is smart and po Susie as someone who is like popular and and beloved, but then also she turns out to be just as smart as Jenny, or maybe smarter, is definitely like an interesting way to play on Jenny's particular insecurities. So I'm interested to see where this all goes. Okay, what are we what are we looking for here? What is clues? Is this clue? Gumbold pin. The Dean was wearing one the day he died. Could Susie have played a part in the Dean's death? All of Jenny's instincts told her it wasn't possible, but she needed to know for sure. Yeah, this th she's just a cheerleader. It doesn't mean anything that she's wearing team merch. I mean... Did you I'm torn here, but... What? Wow. You pushed him over the balcony, didn't you? How could you ask me something so horrible? Why did you do it? Was he going to cancel the Halloween dance? Please, Jenny, stop. I feel sick. Answer me. Where were you at 4 p.m. on Thursday? I didn't kill the Dean. I promise. Then prove it. I spent the whole afternoon trying to get Veronica to stop crying. I missed cheerleading practice. And it was all your fault. You should have oh. made that comment about her dad. Yeah. She's very sensitive. She started it. I can't believe you thought I killed someone. Oh, I never actually suspected you. I just wanted to see how you'd react. Okay, I feel better about that. Then Keith, and now me. I never thought I'd say this, but sometimes you can be a real... jerk. Oof, harsh words. What were you saying about Keith? Well, you didn't exactly make things easier for him, did you? You don't remember, do you? Oh, well, I suppose it wasn't that bad. What do you mean? After you interrupted the Reverend's eulogy, and after Keith asked you to stop, you tripped and knocked over the Dean's casket, and I guess they hadn't secured the lid properly, because he rolled right out to horrify guests. As you collapsed and fell into his open grave. Jesus. And that's why everyone's so worried about you. It all came flooding back. She had tried to defend her mom and repair her relationship with Keith. Instead, she had ruined everything. Jenny had lost her best friend. You should talk to Keith. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Oh, boy. Well, I mean, she's right. It's not that simple. He thinks my mom killed his dad. She felt the distance between them grow with every passing minute. How could she face him without answers? I have to find the Dean's real killer. I do like that a lot as, like... <laughs> A way, like a, a a proper in character reaction to the idea of having to mend her relationship with Keith. She's like, okay, well, there's like one thing that I think of myself as good at, so I'll just do that thing until it fixes everything, um, instead of you know doing the emotional work that she is clearly not prepared even to consider. Um, but boy, we really like full disco Elysiumed this whole thing up, didn't we? Oh, her skirt is adorable. 
Does she have science shoes on? Uh, you could not fit a lot of science in those shoes. What am I what am I looking for here? Ah. These look like science. All this stuff looks authentic. But that doesn't mean it belongs to Susie. If this is really your lab, what does that thing do? That's Tim. He's a thermal imaging machine. He uses reflected thermographic projections to infer depth-related topography and subsurface bodies. Come again? He lets you see inside stuff. Hmm. Well, what about that thing? That's Judy Kate, a gamma ray induction polygraph. And that? Hydraulically propelled telemetric manipulator. And this? Okay. It That's a tea set. What? I like to drink tea. How did you get all this stuff up here anyway? And without being seen? You'd be surprised how much you can hide in a giant stuffed teddy bear. No, 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 no. That's not an actual answer. <laughs> like, a lot of this stuff looks very heavy. Maybe she's also the Hulk? I mean, I guess that, yeah, that makes sense, right? The Hulk's a scientist. All right, if she gets exposed to gamma radiation at any point during the game, we should take cover. Is there other stuff on the table? Oh, hold on. I had a magnifying glass. The bow in her hair? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I guess that's my fault for making assumptions. Pink bows, fluffy bears, stylish clothes. She can't possibly be a scientist. Do you really expect me to believe that you aren't obsessed with boy bands and the color pink? Brain or bimbo? Which one is it? I am a scientist. But I also believe in the importance of good skin care and the power of matching accessories. You sound ridiculous. Susie couldn't be pretty, popular, and smart. That was just... greedy. I know what's going on here. You've stolen all this stuff. And you're planning to sell it all to buy more fluffy cushions or pink horses or something. I didn't steal anything. Some of the parts are from my father's factory. The rest I bought with my allowance. That's some allowance. If you didn't steal it, why are you worried about people finding out? I'm head cheerleader. I'm captain of the equestrian team. If the other girls knew about this, they'd laugh me all the way to the back of the cafeteria. Why do you care what they think? It's not just them. If my parents found out about my lab, they'd kill me. Why? Don't they want you to be a scientist? I think they'd like me to marry a scientist. Dad says science is a man's okay. job. Okay. Girls are supposed to bake pies and become prom queen. Ugh. Everyone in Arthurton is stuck in the past. If anyone else showed him the things I've created, he'd call them a genius and make them his lead scientist. So tell him. Prove him wrong. I... I just can't. You have to keep my secret. I'm begging you, Jenny. Poor Susie. All of her secrets laid bare. Jenny couldn't help but feel... Disgusted. Maybe there was more to Susie than she had first presumed. Okay, again, I was gonna say, this is like a... <laughs> Susie is an argument against a real straw man version of this idea, but it makes a little bit more sense with the character detail that her father is really shitty and conservative, and so she gets her insecurities about this stuff from that. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, and we are still looking for science. This is all science stuff. Okay, books. Uh, you know what, I'm realizing, I'm not 100% sure, and at this point, of course, I can't remember, uh, whether I explained why I thought the thing that happened at the door was clever. Um, but I thought it was really smart for them to have the clue-searching scene be interrupted before we had found all the clues, rather than that him appearing at the keyhole thing happened afterward. Because that exploits the way that you as a player have a sort of, a sort of like security built up around this like we're going to be in this scene until i find all the things i don't really have to be ready for more narrative yet i thought that was a very clever interruption Seeing anyway books strewn about the floor reminded jenny of something my journal the, li the library I need to get my stuff oh. back where are my clothes 
Oh, Gerald took them. Who the hell is Gerald? Our butler. Of course you have a butler. He's taken them to be cleaned and pressed. They'll be ready in a few days. Well, I need them. Mm. Now. I've got a dress that would be perfect for you. It's got purple bows, and the sequence will really bring out the color of your eyes. I'm so torn. I, I think Jenny's not quite there yet. I'd rather be burned to death. <laughs> okay, well, that's very rude. Me seriously in a purple ball gown. And where's my other stuff? Don't tell me Gerald's got my journal. It's irreplaceable. Like I'd let that nosy old fool see your diary. It's not a diary. It's my case notes. Right, of course. A girl's gotta have a place to keep her secrets. I put all your stuff in the lockbox under my pillows. Are you kidding me? No wonder my head hurts. Jenny was confident that Susie wasn't involved in the Dean's murder. She wasn't evil. Just insufferable. All right, I'm gonna grab my stuff and get out of here. Oh, while you're wandering around, can you find some parts for me? I need a battery and a transistor to finish this device. What? No. I did something for you. It was true. Susie had kept Jenny's journal safe. And the Dean's ring. She'd even revealed her darkest secret to Jenny. Uh, because she had to, though. What's a transistor? Oh, it's an electronic voltage regulator that... Just tell me what it looks like. It's a tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. If you can't find one in my bedroom, there are some old boxes in the attic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transistor and battery. Got it. Go, Jenny! I've got to get out of here. So, yeah, like, I'm a little torn on how to play Jenny here because I want to stay true to her character. But, like, would her character in this moment, especially given what has happened with Keith and everything... Would she be, at this point, realizing that she needs to start being nicer to the people in her life so that she doesn't end up completely friendless and alone? Or, like... I, I think they've they've placed us at an interesting point with her where it does make sense for us to, um... It does sort of make sense for us to get to make this determination. There's a problem I have a lot with, like, role-playing characters that are already established in the world, is that it feels like you should just try to do what they would do, but here I think we have some, I think we have some reasonable narrative leeway. So we're going to play a Jenny who is realized that she has to be nicer, but, um, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a limit to how quickly progress is going to be made. Stars, lips, hearts, and beakers. What would a girl like Susie use as a password? Well, I mean, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. So is this like the other puzzle? Okay, the outer one turns both of the outer ones. The inner one turns everything. And then the middle one just, yeah, turns by itself. Okay. Um. So what, it's probably like a beaker and a heart... And a star? Because, you know, like the whole point of Susie as a character is that she can be all of the things, right? She can she can be brain and also person who likes pink. Um, but I don't... Actually, the exit button is not working here. We do have to just blindly pick one. Uh, how are we going to know? We could just brute force it. They do line up nicely this way. And they don't line up as cleanly in the opposite direction. I wonder if it is just three beakers. Because it could be. Alright, if we're going to make it just three beakers, let's, let's try that first. It's not that hard to get the beakers to line up and then we can just kind of tweak it a little bit. So we'll set the middle one, and then this turns both of the outer ones, and then the middle turns itself. Of course it was the beakers. Clever. Okay, I am a little surprised by that, though. My stuff! 
Jenny hid the ring in her pocket and flipped through the pages of her journal. No obvious signs of tampering. At least Susie knows how to mind her own business. Now I've just got to find a battery and a transistor to give to her. Because it's a video game and we have a fetch quest. Uh, okay, and I'm not allowed to access the left side of the room anymore. The climb bed controls were not working. Okay, yeah, this is battery operated, right? And it's probably best for everybody that this thing not be active anymore because of that. Because of that right there. This will only hurt for a second. Jesus. There's a lot of just like for donating your body to science. There's a lot of loose heads rolling around on the ground in this game. Um also, that pig must have had like a panel on the back of it or something, right? Uh yeah, where can we find a transistor? I mean, it must be in the attic, right? There was that line about the boxes in the attic. And then they didn't let us go to the left side of the bed specifically so that we wouldn't waste our time going over there. So, the boxes in the attic. Let's investigate these boxes. Or just climb, or just climb these boxes. Bunch of old science fair projects. They had all been submitted by Anonymous. And they'd all won first prize. These awards should be hanging on the walls downstairs. It was sad to see all these marvelous accomplishments hidden away in the attic. Susie wanted so badly to please her parents, to live up to their expectations of what a Glatz girl should be. She never even told them she'd entered the science fairs. Right, and then she displays the other stuff. How does she have the time? Also, am I noticing that there's a thing? Okay. A tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. Looks like a transistor to me. I'll give this stuff to Susie, and then I'll find a way out of this place. Although I do think this one would be difficult to use as a sword. I mean, presumably Susie knows how to just open the window, right? But not until we do a quest for her, because this is a video game. When you think about it, actually, this is, like, really strange as a thing that might would appear in a book. Did he write two pages about Jenny going and getting the, <laughs> getting the materials for Susie? Now, back to the task at hand. Making my escape. Don't you want to know what these parts are for? Only if it will help me get out of here. Ah! Careful! That's a stick of dynamite! Dynamite! Are you crazy? You could have blown me to bits. I did say be careful. What are you making bombs for? They're not bombs. They're silent explosives. Silent explosives? Think about it. Dynamite that doesn't make a sound. Impossible, you say? Not at all. My first breakthrough came when I discovered the unique properties of... I can use this to blow my way out of here. <laughs> um, the explosion might be silent, but I think my mom would notice if part of the house was missing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, thanks for the show and tell, but it's time for me to go. And how exactly are you going to leave without being seen? I'm glad you asked, Susan. I'll be making my exit through the window in the attic. Once I found a way to unlock it. Oh, you're out of luck there. My parents are super security conscious. All the windows are locked electromagnetically. Where are the controls? Downstairs, in Dad's study. And I can't get there without being seen. Is there some kind of override? It's impossible to open them from up here, unless there was a total power failure. Well then, I know exactly what to do. 
Okay, well, I'll be here if you need help. Listen, if Jenny LeClue has one skill, it's wrecking stuff. All right, so... I, what do you think the point of a silent dynamite... Like, what is, what is the value of silent dynamite? What would you use that for? It does seem sort of, like, peculiarly um, fitted to our tasks. So I'm assuming what we're going to do here is we are somehow going to overload the power via the lab, right? What does this machine do? That's Judy Kate. She's a portable lie detector. Portable? It's 18 feet tall and bolted to the floor. Yeah, well, I'm still working on that part. But she can detect a lie with 98% accuracy. That's quite a claim. Let's see. <laughs> it's just like one of those love testers that you would find at a bar. Arbiter of truth, detector of lies. Since this is the first time we have met, I will need to calibrate. To begin, please answer this simple question. What is the meaning of life? What? How am I supposed to answer that? Ha. 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 Just kidding. Oh, sorry. I've been experimenting with her personality chip. She's using humor to build a better rapport with subjects. Still needs some work. To begin, please tell me your name. This is like maybe a thing Jenny could learn from, but I suspect Jenny's not very funny. I mean, let's put it through his paces, right? My name is Susan Glass. Nice try. That was a lie. Please tell me your real name. My name is Winston LeClue. Nice try. That was a lie. Please tell me your real name. My name is Jenny LeClue. Welcome, okay, Jenny okay. LeClue. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. I was testing for false positives. An evil twin sister called Penny. Wow. I think I broke it. It's okay. Her fuse just tripped. She gets very sensitive if you lie to her, especially if it's a big lie. But don't worry, she'll reset in a minute. Interesting. That feels like not an optimal trait for a lie detector to have. I mean, I guess you want it to be... You want it to be sensitive to lies enough to perceive them, but... Hey! What'd you do? Oh, that's just Maggie. She helps me find things I've dropped on the floor. Why do you have a man's ring? Okay, judgy. All right, we're trying to we're trying to be more friendly with people. It belonged to um uh, it belonged to a friend. I'm taking care of it for him. But that doesn't also, make any sense. Like, I'm telling you the truth. Sort of, no, kind I of. No, I mean, why would a ring made of gold stick to a magnet? Unless there's something more to it. Which of these machines did you say could see inside things? I mean, also, I was thinking, like, Susie's very smart and could maybe help us solve the case. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Tim. Thermal imaging machine. Metal. Plastic. Wood. There's nothing I can't see inside. Mm. Except, of course, your innermost thoughts. Look, I don't need a best friend. I just need him to examine the ring. Ouch. That hurt my feelings. Go easy on him. He's quite sensitive. Why did she program them all with feelings? Hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. Oh, how wonderful it is to meet you, my new friend. How can I be of service? I need you to look inside something for me. I'd be delighted to. Please place the object on my soft, velvety platform. 
Mm. Come to me, tiny object of vast mystery and import. Reveal to me your deepest secrets. Swim in my warm bath of cabarets. I'm peering deeply inside you. What's that? Deeper still. I've never seen one of those before. wonders I have seen. Well, spit it out already. One moment, please, while I paint you a picture of the journey we just shared. <laughs> I knew there was something special about this ring. It's full of tiny cogs and gears. I've never seen such intricate craftsmanship. I need to borrow your microscope. Tim makes me very uncomfortable. Tiny buttons hidden in plain sight. Clever. I wonder what they do. And I will say that, like, with the Tim thing, and also a little bit with the interrogation of Susie, I really like that even when I'm trying to have Jenny be nice to people, she's not, like, super genuine about it because it does not come naturally to her. I think that's, that's a good character writing. So, yeah, little buttons. Um, okay, what was the order of the buttons in the phrase? This is, okay, this is also a button. My Latin is not good. Est is is, right? So it was like knowledge is true power or something like that. I mean, obviously, like, scientia is the knowledge part. So I'm trying to figure out, like, if we if we press the buttons that correspond to the words in the right order, or we just like go in the right order around the ring. But wouldn't it wouldn't it mean that the word on the left is the first and the word on the right is the second? So maybe they don't go around the ring in that way at all. Um, let's just start doing stuff, okay? Let's try going around the ring and see what happens. Okay, that one stayed depressed. Oh, all right. Well, this will this will just be a very quick process of trial and error then. And yeah, the two the two across from each other being the first means that uh, it was not really related to the phrase at all, probably. Ooh. The ring opened up like a flower. Like a Why very sharp looking ring? flower. Whatever its true purpose, one thing was clear. This ring was important. Important enough to kill for? Dean Strausberry, what were you involved in? Did you say Dean Strausberry? <laughs> Oops. Whose ring is that really? Susie had entrusted her deepest, darkest secret to Jenny. The least Jenny could do was be honest with her. Yeah, I agree. And again, I do think Susie may actually be valuable in solving the case. So. It's the Dean's ring. Well, it was. You stole the Dean's ring? Technically, I found it. Jenny, <laughs> yeah, he dropped it first. Turn that into the police. It could be important evidence. Considering the police think my mom is the Dean's murderer... I certainly won't be handing it over to them. But what if they ask me about it? I can't lie to them. I'm a terrible liar. Oh. I didn't really think that part of it through all the way. Okay, we're not going to make this adversarial. It's not lying. It's just leaving out the parts that don't concern them. But I can't go to jail. My parents will disown me and my reputation will be ruined. No one's going to jail as long as we protect each other. I'll keep your secret. You keep mine. <sighs> okay, she kind of turned into a blackmail thing anyway. Friends. <laughs> sure, or friends. Sure. That's how friends work. I go back to whatever mad science experiment you were doing. I've got a window to open. 
and just, you know, don't talk to any cops. Good advice for Susie. Good advice for everyone out there. Just don't. It's not not a good idea. Complex formulas filled the large chalkboard. Clearly the work of a genius. Okay, she's secretly smart. We get it. What is all this anyway? Oh, that? I'm working on a proof to help me pick the perfect prom dress. You've got to be kidding me. I know, I know. I'm not sure it can be done either, but I've got to try. It's the biggest decision a girl has to make. Gross. Okay, so if we're talking about prom, I, I definitely was calibrating them a little bit too early. But to be fair, relative to the, to the height of the adults, these girls are very small. Alright, what does this do? Uh, maybe stop playing with that. Him yet. If you want to help, get him to pick some things up and put them down again. He needs the practice. Just don't pick up anything too heavy. <laughs> and immediately Jenny's ability to wreck stuff senses have kicked in. Alright, well again, narratively, I don't know that this makes a lot of sense, but in terms of this being a video game, obviously we should play with this. Look, I'm helping. I did it! Okay, let's, let's give you a seat on the box, in a place of prominence. Okay, the arm does not want to do that. I was sort of wondering if that was going to turn out to be the heavy thing, because we don't know what this is a box of. Uh, here, Susie, use your super strength to lift this. Did you notice, by the way, Tim does operate on Gamma, like, it's going to happen. <laughs> Before the end of the game, it is going to occur. Also, uh, pursuant to Tim, while I'm thinking about Tim, just a general piece of advice from your old buddy SB to you. Uh, upon your first meeting with a new person, do not ask them to manipulate or interact with your soft, velvety tray. That's harassment. You could go to jail. Uh, here, Susie, I brought you this chair. It looks like your, your tiny, tiny legs are getting tired. Okay, and here's how we break stuff. Hmm, must have been too heavy. <laughs> She's so Please pleased with herself. He's only a prototype, and I'm out of replacement parts. Oh, I was gonna try to be nicer to people, I guess. I got it! In the back of Jenny's brilliant mind, a plan was forming. I know exactly how to get out of here. How can I escape from Glatt's Manor? Okay, well, given that we're trying to be nice to people, it's not exactly rocket science. Uh, let's just not use the dynamite on Susie's home. We'll just we'll just cause some power stuff, some power problems, and that'll that'll just pop the window right open, right? Or at least allow me to pop the window right open. When I overload the robot arm, it sparks and fuses. When I lie to Judy Kate, she nearly overloads the power supply. So if I could overload them at the same time, then I might be able to short the power and open the window in the attic. But Jenny couldn't operate both machines by herself. Okay, well, 
I like that this is a plan we're apparently going to have to include Susie in, because that means that it's not something I'm doing to her, it's something I'm doing with her. It's a team-building exercise. Susie? Yes? I need your... Asking Susie for help was worse than having a tooth pulled out. I need you to do something. Of course. What can I do to help? I didn't say I needed your help. Oh, sorry. I don't owe you anything. Okay, okay. What do you want me to do? Go stand by Judy, Kate. Uh, all right. But why? No time for questions. Just wait for my instructions. <laughs> Jenny really is on sort of a hair trigger with her insecurities, too, isn't she? I guess, you know, teenage girls... Listen, it's tough to be a teenager, no matter who you are. I think girls get it pretty rough in particular. Susie, are you ready? Welcome back, Susie Glatz. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. Okay, I'm ready. What should I do now? Just hold on until I give the signal. Oh, it's okay. It's weird that they're actually going to make me do it. Like, it's clear what the plan is, right? The robot arm strained under the weight of the giant metal object. Okay, Susie, tell a lie and make it a big one. Oh, okay. A big lie. Oh. I've got just the thing. I'm wearing black socks. That was a lie. No, Susie. A big lie. Something terrible. I'm just no good at lying. Well? Tell Judy Kate you killed Dean Strasberry. What? That's horrible. I can't say that. Do you want to help or not? Yes, but... Then hurry up and say it. Okay, okay. I killed the Dean. Louder! I killed the Dean. Bigger! I killed Dean Strawsberry. Say it like you mean it! I murdered Dean Strawsberry! I bashed his brains in! Now I danced on his grave! Oh, she really went for it, huh? Wow. That was messed up. Oh my gosh. I'm a horrible person. As Susie Glatz contemplated every bad thing she'd ever done in her life, Jenny heard the unmistakable sound of success. <laughs> Attuned as she is to the sound of an electromagnetic lock on a window opening. It worked. I, we should go see if Susie's okay. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh. How you handling that there, champ? No? Nothing? Okay. Uh, later, I guess. She's just sort of like standing there in catatonic shock, and Jenny is out of here. It's, yeah, it's in character, at least. I'm sure this will end with us being the best of friends. Oh, I forgot oh, about curfew. You can't go out wearing pajamas. I'm not playing dress up with you while my mom is trapped in jail for a crime she didn't commit. The real killer is still out there. And what if you find him? What then? Jenny paused. She hadn't thought that far ahead. Are you scared? I don't think she is. I think she should be, but I don't think she is. Of course not. Jenny would never admit it, even to herself, but she was scared. You know who should be scared? The murderer. Because I'm coming for him. Well, let me help you. We can work out a plan together. 
Sorry, Susie, but I work alone. At least take this with you then. So we can stay in touch. <laughs> she built branded walkie-talkies. Yeah, I think... Fine, yeah. I'll take it. But don't call me. I'll call you. Okay, good luck. And be careful. There's still a killer out there. I'll be fine. Jenny, you won't tell anyone about my lab, right? Only if you cover for me. Jenny. Of course. I'm always here for you. We're going to be best friends, Jenny LeClue. I just know it. Sure. Right after I sign up for cheerleading. Okay, well, Susie took that in a nicer way than I think it was meant. To catch a real killer, Jenny needed her detective gear. But that was at home, across town and swarming with police. It wasn't wise to travel through town after curfew. To avoid being caught, she'd have to find another way home. Excellent, thought Jenny. Time to exercise my sneaking muscles. I mean, the home is like right across the lake, right? Isn't it? Isn't that what it said at the window? Maybe we can find a boat or something. Okay, I... I have no idea how high up we are, but uh, g given the height of the f tree shadows in the background and also how rich the people who own this house are, I suspect getting down from here is going to be a bit of an endeavor. So you know what? I think we're just going to go ahead and wrap it right there for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I am way into the directions that they are going with this thing. The sequence that opened this episode um, I thought was very impressive. When you come back next time, tomorrow... We may well spend the entire hour trying to figure out how to get down from this extremely tall house. And we'll see you then.